everyone. Bear Bets is back for the final time during the, the football season. I'm your host, the Bear Chris Flake. Jeff Schwartz will join me shortly. We got a we figured we've been appreciative all year long of everybody uh, downloading and checking us out on the YouTube and listening and the interaction on Twitter, which we all we weren't necessarily always able to uh, to get back to, but we figured let's call this episode Bear Mail. Let, 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 let's let's take all we, we collected some of your thoughts, some of your questions. Uh, some of some of your, your opinions as well, and we figured, you know what? Let's uh, let's let Jeff and I have some fun with with some of the questions that uh, you reached out with, and and if, if you got anything else that maybe wasn't covered during the during the show, re- reach out to us before the uh, before the game, or you know at any time. And now uh, now that football season's over, we can do our best. I love this idea. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, have the have the people ask us what they want to hear. Exactly. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot of. Of uh, so, you know, some Super Bowl stuff we've covered a little bit already. But we're mm-hmm. going to expand on, and obviously some off the wall questions. I love the off the wall questions. It's my favorite. Yes, ones. Ex- exactly. The, yeah. the ones that you don't necessarily have something off the top of your head. You need to like dig and like go through the old yes. like file cabinet and think a little bit to yes. the situation and dig in. So uh, hopefully we had a couple of those as well. It should be fun. Let's do it. Well, let, let, let's do it. So the, the 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 first one is from Taco about me. Well, before we say before we get to that question. We had tacos yesterday for lunch. And they were delicious, they were right? Delicious. I told you. They were un- yeah. you, 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 you. I might go back there you, today. You, you usually, like, when you were so high on them, I was worried that we were going to get, like, a, an over-promise, under-deliver. I usually like to under-promise, over-deliver. You, oh, you over-promise, but it over-delivered. Those was, things were they're incredible, right? Incredible. And then you got the, the spicy shrimp. Uh, you got the ceviche, yeah, the yeah, aqua chili was, afterwards. Yeah, that kind of lit you yeah, up a little that, bit. That lit, that lit me up for a little while, but, yeah. Uh, Nice, nice little, nice little taco truck over on La Cienega. It was cute. We were sitting in the car. The, the, the window steam, the window <laughs> steamed up because we were eating hot tacos and in, in my dad's car. And then we were just like the steamed up. It was pouring rain. I mean, it rained a good. I saw a tweet that it rained twelve inches at UCLA yesterday, which is Oof. pretty remarkable. So, yeah, well, the two East Coast guys came yeah. and brought all the all yeah. the all the rain to LA. So yeah, here, tacos here we good. are. And I might have to find some tacos on the way to the airport. The airport yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, talk about me. Yeah. Super Bowl Gatorade colors are live. So yes. what's your pick and why? And is there a strategy to this? I, I, I guess, like, you got to first, I guess, pick would be who do you think is going to win yes. the game, right? right. And then yes. maybe it's a team color. Maybe, I, I, like, I, I guess if you think the Chiefs are going to win, maybe you go red. If you think the Niners are going to win, I guess you could go red there too, right? All right, so we discussed this a little bit on the podcast on, I think it was Wednesday, right? Mm-hmm. About the Gatorade color. So for the longest time, not, there's, there's, always, there's, there's no such thing as never and always, right? But it was, <laughs> it was pretty close to matching the jersey of the winning team. And when I say that, I mean that typically yellow Gatorade, red Gatorade, and orange Gatorade stain white jerseys. So if you're a team that wears a white jersey bear, and your drink gator on the side. Because Gatorade, believe it or not, doesn't always make your mouth, right? It falls. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah. Through, 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 through yeah, the mouthpiece yeah. and a mask. And, and, mask. Yeah, yeah. The, the squirt. The, yeah. It's really the cups of Gatorade, right? You just like pour it. It just spills everywhere. So no one wants a jersey in the Super Bowl, anytime really, a white jersey with Gatorade stains on it. Of yellow, <laughs> red. And always out. Blue doesn't stain as bad. Purple doesn't stain as bad. So if you look at the Super Bowl winners, the Chiefs had orange last time. They were red. Mm-hmm. Last year it was blue or purple. The year before that it was blue or purple. The year before that it was blue or purple, right? Because those are the colors that most often do not stain the jersey form. It's not an always and never, but go down the list, you see when someone wears a dark colored uniform, they typically will get the, the yellows, the oranges. When they're wearing a light colored uniform, blue, purple, clear. There's one exception. There was one had an orange, I think, with that wore a, a white uniform. But that, that's how I do this. So if you think Chiefs are going to win, I go orange again. It's what they wore. Assume it's what they had in uh, in 2019. A lot of teams don't change the Gatorade colors. So like, it's like the Chiefs are going to do a random color. Um, but that's that's what I go with orange. So I guess the answer to the final question is yes, there is an actual strategy. Yes, and you, and you just you just heard it that, laid that's out. That's a strategy, there. of course. Low limits. This is a fun wager. Right. But my favorite Gatorade story is the one that Jared Lorenzen told a friend. Jared Lorenzen, former quarterback, uh, Giants quarterback. And he said, he told a friend read like this, not Jared Lorenzen, but someone that knew Jared Lorenzen very closely after he passed said that in 2007, when he was with the Giants, Mm -hmm. he went and looked at the Gatorade color 
before the game. He opened <laughs> the top of the of the Gatorade, the big you know the big uh, jug, and looked at the color and texted his buddies on what it would be. And uh, obviously, again, limits are low. Right. Probably like a lot of money on it, but uh, legend, a gambling legend that's, for doing that. That is that. that's beautiful. Yeah, that, that, that's why. Hey, ten dollars, twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. You buy yourself a couple couple slices of pizza or a couple cheeseburgers, something like that. It's fantastic. It all. Story, it all right? Any chance it all, the bookmakers lose, we're for it, right? Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Next question. A little more dialed into the game here from, from, from Hone DA. Why are the lines moving to plus two with all of the bets on Kansas City? Is the San Francisco future liability that bad? Uh, I, I believe the... The second part of that, yes, I think the liability for the chief, for the uh, for the Niners is that bad because I think in that when they had that middle of the season little lull where they lost a three in a row and they kind of drifted, I think close to to eight, nine, ten to yeah. one or so. I, I think a lot of people did uh, wager on San Francisco there, but but I think also the line moving to two with but I think in the early wagering when the line moved opened up at two or whatever it was, and a lot of people did bet. On Kansas City, then, right. and 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 the line dropped, and and I think we've then seen a lot of people just professional betters betting the number, right? And yeah, now you have an opportunity to to bet San Francisco at one, one and a half, and I think that has driven the 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 number to back to two uh, after the initial barrage of Chiefs yeah. money early on, and I know I thought earlier in the week as well. I saw that the uh, the superbook actually had gone to click to two and a half, yeah. which which tells me they're getting even more uh, forty nine money. But it, it's one of those. It's a fascinating game because I think it shows that th- that that's kind of the 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 difference between an odds maker and a books maker. Like the bookmaker, like you need to kind of balance the, the the number is just. It's not always just a straight power rating symbol. It, 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 other factors like parlay liability, future liability, all these other things potentially come into play to try and figure out the best way to put the, the, put the book in the house in a position where they're going to have the best possible outcome for it financially. We, we also talked about there, and this is worth discussing, the, the power rankings, right? Where you know the power rankings have the Niners, depending on who you look at, right? One and a half, two, two and a half. And a lot of the syndicates that move the number, right? They just wager off of that. They're not looking at the things that me and you might look at, right? As far as matchups and things we like or don't like about teams. They look at the rankings. They see, look, okay, we, we have this game in here. It's not here. Let's wager on this. And that obviously moves the line in one direction. Is there also a thought that maybe someone's trying to get the line to go to two and a half or three to buy back on the Chiefs? Yes, absolutely. So can you explain that process to people about how the syndicates, again, not just like – the regular, you know, there's of course in the Super Bowl, there's a lot of 15, 20, 25 dollar wagers. We're talking about the people that bet six figures that move the number. Explain sort of the, the buyback on that. Yeah, no, it, it, they'll they'll put in an amount of money that will move the line to a desired number. Like that, they'll want to take Kansas City at plus three. As, I'm just using this for an example. Like like if the Niners are two and a half and they and they're looking to get the Chiefs plus three, they'll throw in enough money to. To, to kind of get that number to th- to three, and then the instant that happens, their real bet yes. will come in on Kansas City plus three. So they 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 figured out their 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 way of of here's what we're going to outlay to get the line to three, and then once we get the line to three, that's when our real bet's going to yeah. come in, and and the difference will obviously be the uh, the, the the potential profit there. But yeah, now that is uh, line manipulating certainly goes on, and it's hey. You, I always say, like, the, the, the biggest advantage that we have as bettors is we don't have to bet on every single game. Yeah. But the books have to put a number up on every single game. So if you find a situation where you can get a desired number by kind of yeah. your action, take advantage of it. Yeah, and and – that's obviously a, a part of this that doesn't get talked about enough, you know, the, mm-hmm. how people can move the numbers. And, look, I, I am – over the years, I was big into, like, oh, the public versus sharp kind of yep. split. Mm-hmm. And I think I've moved away from that in right. recent years because that- I have an opinion on a game. And, look, there's some some years you're good, some years you're bad, but I feel like I'm okay enough to just trust my gut on a lot of it. And I would rather be in the, on the non-public side for the most part. Um, but in a game like this, everyone's wagering on it. So, to me, right. the, the public versus sharp split, again – I know sharp people 
syndicates that are on the Chiefs. I know some that are on the Niners. Like, I, you can't let that, in my opinion, right. an, a, inform what you're going to do in this game. And, and that's the thing, like, when you see those tweets and stories about, like, ticket count, a lot of times that some of these ticket counts are just kind of moving – just kind of dollars like, like dumped, no, it's just, it's just it's not, so yeah it doesn't it's not as big in this game i don't think all right next one from uh from 80 j rod i know Jay, i've interacted with j rod on twitter before j, j rod's a big tennis guy uh li like me are there any player props you would like a ladder up on cmc rush yard perhaps so you, you know what he's talking about i believe so yeah we, we basically yeah. You say you like christian mccaffrey to have 80 plus rushing yards yeah, or whatever. Bet, and like, then you can bet 80, you bet 90, you go up yeah, the ladder so the at, pl at plus money. So I think CMC rush yards is something that you'd want to look at to maybe get get a uh, an alt number at a, at a higher number to uh, to get some plus money. I, I think that's something. So you would hit it You would hit it at over 89 and a half and then over 100 and right, over exactly. 100. Right, exactly. And, and, and get plus money as, as you continue uh, to go up. Oof. Like, like is it? I, I think I'm more conservative where like I just will just take the one wager and be done with it. Okay. Like and I, that's fair. Like, or I just might take the plus one, the the one ten plus one fifty, and just be done with it. Would Would there be something that earlier in the week we had talked about Juice and his receiving yardage prop? Is that is I don't know what what the what the, what they are. I don't know I don't know what they're, but like I know there is with the over under with him. Like I wonder if there is like a whatever his what was it nine and a half? Is that what the his your four the Juice? Yeah, it was, it was four, over. It was three and a half. Three and a half. So like I wonder if there is like a. An over ten and a half, or an over fifteen and a half. Oh, maybe may, may that maybe I, I don't. I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. Um, so do you when you do that? Do you take so you take one unit on like the over the original number, and then do you take is it like three quarters of a unit? Yeah, the yeah, next yeah, one, yeah. You can do it every one. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, that's how I would do it. I, I would do it like three. It terrifies me to have so many wagers on one player because I feel like if things don't go well, especially at that running back position, where sometimes the ball they don't mm -hmm. hand the ball off to him. We talked about injuries often happen that mm -hmm. position. That having so much on one player would would terrify I me. Think, My personal. I think at the same time as well, some people might argue differently in saying we're trying to we're handicapping the game. We've handicapped the game, and this is our handicap for the game that Rasheed Rice, oh, well, George Kittle, I mean, I've done that. Christian, they, they yeah. are going to have a big game and, and put all of the other like that's the only thing. I'm going to focus on is, is this one player, and, and maybe yeah. that feels that they give him like like, like, would, like would would Rasheed Rice would that would that be something that would you would interest? I mean, I have not? his overs already. Mm -hmm. Look, the, the, but the thing is, if the game doesn't go the way I think it's going to go, I'm going to lose all my wagers. <laughs> I mean, it's just like so. I, I I understand saying okay, CMC's going to have these many mm -hmm. yards. I'll ladder up on his with Rasheed Rice. I have his over, but maybe I'm not technical enough in in my head to like be well. He's going to have between 80 and 100 yards. I'm just like over mm -hmm. 68 and a half done. Like I'm good with just winning that wager and moving on. Perfectly fair. And yeah, I, I tend to be a little bit more conservative, like you, with that. But I will look for like like I like like an underdog. Like I will play like reverse lines and lay three and a half with a dog and plus money and things like that. So so I don't necessarily get too crazy with with this yeah. player prop ladder, but but I certainly appreciate people who do. Next one, and this we kind of talked about this earlier in the week uh, as well, and I like it from, from Rich Spinardi. Is the say it out loud test still viable? You get Spags, Reed, Mahomes, and two points. Sounds good to me. And this is kind of like what we were talking about yeah. with like the old school, just kind of say it out loud, put the check marks on the board. You're going to get Reed and Spags against Kyle and Steve Wilkes. Okay, I'm going to take the multiple Super Bowl winning, winning, winning coach and, and Spags. Yeah. I, get, I get arguably the greatest quarterback or one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in Patrick Mahomes. He's won Super Bowls and he's a dog and he's great. I, I'll take that. I'll get, I take the Chiefs defense the, the way that I, I'll take, like, I, I think sometimes, like, the simplest handicap like that, like, I'm a big Occam's Razor guy. Like, the, 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 sometimes the, the most the answer is the most obvious answer and the obvious yeah. path. Like it, it's there right in front of you. Don't don't overthink it. I'm a big fan of don't overthink it. Sometimes I, I think a lot of times uh, we we we, we kind of go a little bit too yeah. crazy. I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, uh, of the say it out loud, talk it through, and just just use a little common sense. So you're changing your pick to the Chiefs? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Because like, I'm I'm using it. I'm using it on the other side. I'm thinking it through and saying out, saying it out loud. I get all of those 49ers weapons in in this game, 
and I think the Chiefs defense is going to be a little stretched to be able to take yeah. all of them away in an indoor environment like that where you're not going to have to worry about weather, wind, anything like that, and that the 49ers will not be behind like they were in the first in, in their two NFC playoff games. I, th- I think the odds of the team, it's been power rated number one, number two all year long, yeah. coming out and playing three subpar games in the biggest stage. I, 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 think, I, think, the, I think the Niners win. Yeah, I mean, to me, I, I said I, I bet Chiefs money line almost immediately because it, it came down to very simply, I get Patrick Mahomes or Brock Purdy. I mean, that, that was my first initial pick of this game. Was like, I get then obviously we've d- dove into more. I'm, I'm totally comfortable having that. I even have a, a Chiefs future Super Bowl. I'm not hedging off of that, not yet. Maybe I will on Sunday. But like, I just, I think you look at this matchup and you say, well, one team is one on the road at Buffalo, one team's one on the road at Baltimore. One defense is playing well. One defense, by the way, like the, the, the Niners defense has not played terribly well in the last no. six games. I get the better coach, in my opinion. I get the the sort of better quarterback and, and better maybe the, the Niners are top heavy, but the Chiefs have I think have more depth on their roster. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, like Makes sense. CMC, A Debo, but I mean Drew Tranquil came in and had an amazing like they don't have the Niners don't have that, in my opinion, on defense. So um, but that's what I went with, at least originally. I think that if you're just, if that's your only thing about this game, then you're probably not doing enough research and enough analysts about okay. the game. But at the simplest blush, I took Chiefs money line for that reason. And, and, and the great thing about what you're just saying about you have Chiefs, Chiefs futures, I have Chiefs futures and I have Niners futures because that was something that we were talking about all year long with Sammy P, like the, the opportunity to buy at a low point when these teams are struggling like we did with San Francisco, like we did with Kansas City, knowing that these teams were going to be in the playoffs and you're going to be sitting there potentially Super Bowl Sunday with a pretty nice portfolio where you don't even have to make a wager on a, on a, a money yeah. line or a side in this game, knowing that regardless of how it turns out, you're going to be cashing a bunch of futures. Yeah, the future. So, like, I don't know. I'm not anti-hedge bear. I hedged once. I had a big future on Tampa Bay when they won the year that Tom Brady won the Super Bowl because I, I knew he was going there. I remember there. we were talking. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had a, I had a, like a plus 1,200, which was really good at the time. I think I bought a little bit on Kansas City, but I think I thought the Chiefs were going to lose. So I didn't do that much. But I, I don't, I'm not like a hedging person. I, I don't know. And, and as, as some people like to say, hedging is for gardeners. Yeah, I don't. It, it doesn't appeal to me. We're, we're going to get to another question here later on that's going to explain sort of. I, I probably should have hedged on an opportunity. I did not. I just don't like it. Usually, it depends on the stake and the amount that we're talking about here. Like, like if, if it's a fifty dollar wager, like, like you know what? Let, usually, I, I, and it's going to a couple hundred back. Let, let it ride. But like, if it's if you're putting in a significant amount for, for, for something and you're going to win a significant it, at the very least, I'll, I'll bet my stake in order basically to have a free roll and, yeah. and, and do that. I, I don't want to get too much into potential profit because you'll, you'll lose enough of these bets Correct. anyway where an opportunity to, to make a large chunk, yes. you, you don't want to eat into that. Correct. So. Shall we move on? Yeah, because this is going to come up in the next question. Uga steam engine, UGA steam engine. I already have a bit. I'm wondering if that refers to uh, University of Georgia. I, I would assume so. Yeah. I already bet Georgia to win the national title yeah, last year. Is, is it? Do we got a little? There little, uh, we go. There yeah. we go. And, and we're probably the best team in the country again this year, but they lost at the wrong time. And we, we had an, we, we, they, that, that orange not a problem ball, anymore. We got not, not a problem anymore. We got a thing. The worst bad beat of all time. For, for us individually, I would imagine. I would imagine that that's what the the, the, the worst one we've had. The the worst one I, I I think that I have had, and it's a non like, I would say it is horse racing related. Okay. I was alive in two thousand three or two thousand four in a pick six at Hollywood Park that had like a five or a six day carryover in it, and there was three four million five million dollars in the pool or whatever. And uh, I was alive into the last leg of the pick six uh, to a single ticket for like three point something million dollars. And another uh, horse that I had, I was alive to like one point something, one point three million or something like that. 
and I had two horses in the race. I did not have the favorite, and um, the, the two horses, one of the one of the two that I bet was like twenty something to one. That was the one that was a, a pool payout. Yeah. Um, drew the rail, hesitated at the start, kind of got left. It was a debut runner, um, and then kind of made a big middle move and looked like it was going to get, but just got tired and okay. flattened out. Uh, the other, the best of us. The other, the other bet was the like the second choice in the race, and was in it, kind of at the top of the stretch, and then faded, and got beat. So sort of to be alive for three, well into six figures was what was a was a brutal beat. However, what makes it an even worse beat is that the the, the horse that was on the rail, the debut runner, yeah. the horse's name was Aaron Asher. I I, I like the horse, and then. I like this, this horse figures, this horse fits at this level. And then what ultimately happened, the next time out, Aaron, Aaron Asher ran again and was 20-something to one and won. Oh, so, no. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did bet the horse to win that okay, day. So you got some money back. But it was not three point whatever million dollars. Wow. So, yeah, I, I handicapped the race pro, right. I just It was just not meant to be. Jeez. I meant to be that day. So that was a uh, that was a stomach punch right there. Um, so this was probably six years ago now. There was a uh, an offshore website. There are a lot of those. No longer with us that offered ten, <laughs> offered uh, ten nickels, ten teams, ten, ten team open parlays, ten nickels, right? Yeah. And um, it was uh, I never heard I never heard ten nickels before, but yeah, sure, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they had a, they had a ten ten team open parlays. Okay. And so what an open parlay is is you just can, you have open slots. So you build it, you start with two teams, or however you want, mm -hmm. and then you just add teams as you see fit to get to 10 eventually, mm -hmm. right? Now, this is a $20 wager because yeah. these never hit, right? right. You, just, you just do them for fun. It was uh, the summer, too, so it was a lot of baseball. So I had hit nine in a row. That was nine for nine, okay? Right. So it's paying out 106 to one. So it's a, big, right. it's a good payday, right, for a yeah. $20 wager. So I needed one more game. I, I, hit, a, I hit a Yankees... Red Sox under for Sunday Night Baseball to get to nine. Nine wins, okay. okay? So Monday, there was nothing I liked in baseball. Tuesday, the Minnesota Lynx were hosting the Indiana <laughs> Fever, okay? The Minnesota Lynx were minus 1,500 on the money line to oh, win that game. No, you didn't. They're at home facing the 2-17 and 17 Indiana Fever. All right, Bear? So I put the last leg, I put the Lynx in the last leg. Minus fifteen hundred. So the payout. I just wanted to win. Like I, yeah, yeah. I, I won the money so at this point. It was one eleven to one. So the game's not on TV. I don't know where to watch it. So I remember I was sitting playing with my with my son with like looking up the scores, and the Lynx were losing early on. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. They were losing at halftime, so I put money Lynx second half. Oh no, Bear. They lost by like twenty. And it was like it was Indiana's only road win of the season, and like the Lynx's only home loss of the season. Because the Lynx were back then were winning championships, right? Minus fifteen hundred favorite. Oh, it lost, happens. Lost at home to a two win team and blew up my ten team money line parlay. Oh, oh, oh! oh. It, 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 you look at those prices, and y'all, there's no way they're gonna lose it. The other night in. Uh... In college basketball, I remember uh, someone lost. Yeah, a big Santa Clara was a, a like a in minus eighteen, yeah, minus eight hundred or something at home against, oh, against no, San, big, Diego. Yeah, okay. San Diego. San Diego, and I think San Diego won by double digits. <sighs> it, ha it happened. College it ha basketball like it happens more often than, than than professional basketball. That was bad, buddy. It, ha it happened. It happened in the NBA a few weeks ago as well. My my buddy had a. A big money line parlay with the, uh, I think it was the. Uh, the Celtics have been big. No, it, it was the too. Timberwolves and the Hornets, I think. I think Ooh. the Timberwolves Ooh, lost at home to the Hornets. Yeah. Oh, there we go, Hornets. Yeah. The Lakers were in town Monday, too, and LeBron and AD both played. I was bummed I wasn't there. That was a bummer. A bummer. And I go to one game a year. I, take, I go to the Lakers game every right. year. So, yeah. Oh. Next question from the Action Network HQ. Did you? Did Hello, you, Action Network. Did you have? Did you have uh, Chad Millman or? Uh, yeah, uh, I had both of them. Yeah, I had all of them. Actually, Abram, I text them all. Of them Abram, so, my, so, old, my old employers, Chad, Chad, and former former colleagues, at former employers. Oh yeah, of mine. Love, love, love both those guys. What's the most random thing you've ever bet on? Well, I bet on pickleball the other night, which which was fun. Agassi and Graf versus Sharapova and Johnny Mac. 
Um, and well, during COVID, you bet on it went well. Russian Russian table tennis, right? I did not bet on Russian table. Oh, tennis. I thought you did. No, 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 no. I bet on Little League World Series before. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've done bet, that. I bet on that, and that was always always fun and entertaining to do. So one night we we're watching the spelling bee, my wife and I, and I said, you know, we could wager on this probably. Good for you. And so I went on to the website. You call it ten nickels? Oh, you called yes. it ten nickels, and. Um, I uh, I just we picked a random kid and they won. <laughs> so we, we I bet on the spelling bee one night just to have. I'm some, watching it. Have, I want to have action. Just have some action on it. That's so sp spelling bee for me is the Little League World Series used to actually because again I worked Action Network and we covered all those things right and and there are edges to be had. It, it was a little bit better you know ten years ago or whatever than it is now when mm -hmm. more people are eyeballs on. But yeah. Little League World Series could you can make money on. Oh no, it. I had a I had a buddy who his dad like watched all of like the, the the regionals and everything, and like knew like which kids were unhittable and, and like the end. It was it was hysterical to get his to get his breakdowns and and like see them actually like turn out to be like spot on. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to hear like people ch chime in. I'd, I'd love to hear some of the more ridiculous stuff that people have been because, because I mean, it, it's I wouldn't even like call like these like Super Bowl props like the halftime the, the novelty props. Yeah, about what's Usher's first song going to be and like all that. Like the limits I, are so low. Yeah, I, I, like they're they're not even. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to know some of the other stuff besides uh, like the the the, the Russian yeah. ping pong and table tennis during COVID. I mean, I I, I bet on some. A lot of a lot of ridiculous things in soccer and team totals and uh, I know you text, you text different us those, those, different those leagues around guys. the world and Afcon was uh, is going on right now so I've been on a lot of Afcon stuff so uh, maybe not ridiculous like like wagers but certainly events that are a yeah. little bit off the off the beaten path a little bit I want to go to Afcon next year it's in Morocco next year I I I think you make enough money to fly to Morocco. Mor oh, you you want Fox to fly you to Morocco? I, well, if Fox wants to fly me to Morocco, <laughs> I'd be more than happy to have Fox fly me to Morocco to to, to go to the African uh, African Cup of Nations in, uh, the, in there. The text you sent me that when you told your wife about going to yeah, yeah, the, it was, it, I, I don't it, think it, she's I don't think she's going with you. No, no. I I, I asked my <laughs> wife. I said, "Do you want to go to?" The, I said, "Do you want to go to African? You want to go to Morocco with me next next year for African?" Cup of Nations, and the, and the response was F no. She doesn't like. She's not a soccer person, but but she would. She wouldn't want to go for like she, the, she, oh, like I, the I, trip. She would want to go. My wife would trip. go with me. Like and and and, and, and then I followed it up with, "Can I go?" And she goes, "Yeah, you and your divorce lawyer." <laughs> so I, I just don't think she wants me to spend a couple of weeks in, in in Morocco watching watching soccer, which is mean. That is mean. It's because it's mean. she was going to come to Australia. And then the U.S. women lost this pet, and then oh, she was gonna come for the yeah, she was she was, was gonna come for for a bit at the end of the trip as well, and then uh, U.S. women lost and kind of derailed some plans. So yeah. it's all right. She we, we we love to travel, so she loves to travel. No, yeah. I think I think by the time this comes out, you won't even be in the states. Correct. I, this is a, this is a this is a Friday release, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll I'll be uh, en route to en route. Uh, to Providenciales, Turks and Caicos. Love it there. Our employer has a question. The NFL on Fox. Yeah. What's the best football movie of all time? For me, for me, it's the long, the original Longest Yard. Burt Reynolds, Paul Crew, Mean Machine. Nothing, nothing better than that. How many people listening to this know what the have, hell I'm talking no, about? No, have seen, have actually seen that movie. Listening to the podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, go I, definitely under. So what, up, whatever I, the, whatever the number. You, yeah. So, so is well, under. Because like I, I have my favorite football movie, which I was saying But I went in and looked at some list of people's favorite football movies, and I think I saw there was 1974 was yeah. the longest yard. Yeah. Um, so mine's Friday Night Lights, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that the football is actually good. So I, 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 when I watch sports movies, I like if it's a kid's like a Sandlot thing, like whatever. Mm -hmm. Rookie of the Year. I, mean, I, I want to see, like, if it's that time of movie, like, good. The football was good in there. Like, I, I need to see good football. So, Friday Night Lights for me, the story, and the football is pretty good. Um, any given Sunday, I put up there as well. Um, you know, obviously, having played in the NFL, sort of seeing what happens right. you know, with like with the the doc, James Woods character, the doctor, mm -hmm. like, having sort of not been that bad, but having dealt with doctors <laughs> before. Um, so, those are probably be for me. I, I was, again, I was looking at the list, and they, so, I don't have an anti-Rudy take per se, Bear. You've seen Rudy, right? Yes, I've seen Rudy. 
But like the whole story, and of course, when you come to research it, it didn't actually happen anything Correct. like that, which is kind of sort of changes the whole. There's entertainment, and you're entertainment, gonna, yeah. Like, but like liberties, I'm like, yeah, it wouldn't ever go like that. <laughs> when, I, when I started playing football, like none of that actually would happen. So I don't dislike Rudy, but being so high on the list on some of these lists, bear. Um, I'm surprised. Friday Night Lights, though, for me, is my favorite one. I'm, I'm sure, um, remember, the Titans is probably one that a lot That's of people... high up there. I watched it with my kids recently. That was a, They're at the age where they can... Actually, actually going through the... Uh, that. Um, people had Jerry Maguire near the top. I mean, it's a football-adjacent movie, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah, I, 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 could, I could see that. I could see that. We just watched... Re, uh, with my kids, watched Little Giants recently. That was fun. The kids that was fun. That. Was yeah, fun. that was definitely was fun. fun movie. My, my 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 wife does love Blindside, even though now we had controversy around that movie, so I didn't even want to want to mention it. But I, I enjoy Blindside. It's a good movie. I enjoy, I enjoy that movie. I think that's a, I think that's it. I'm talking about other movies. Is it does it is it like does it have to be like is Jerry Maguire a football movie or is it a movie about? I, I, like I, I think it's football. I, I think it's a movie about football and the business and the football. Yeah. Jerry Maguire is good. It's a great movie. For Friday Night Lights, like if, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of this too. Like, if it's on TV, which of the movies am I going to watch immediately? And Friday Night Lights is going to be that one. Perfect. Yeah. The Kylie Winfrey chimes in next. Who has the best mascot in the NFL? I love mascot questions. All right. Mm. Let me think because they don't because the, you know they don't have. It's not like college football. But they don't have a lot of the live right. mascots. The best mascot in the NFL. It's definitely not the Eagles. You know, Chelsea, it's not the Eagles. Um, who's the best? I mean, the... I, I kind of... The Vikings. The Vikings have a great one. Vikings might be so the like, choice there. So, like, to me... Hey, here's the thing. The best uniform in the NFL is the Raiders, in my opinion. Second best might be the Niners. I, yeah. I can... I, 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 think, I love the Niners uniform. So, to me, so if, I, if any of the Raiders have the best uniform, they probably have to be up there as far as, like, best mascot, right? Because the uniform... It's obviously the helmet right. and the colors. Like, that's mm -hmm. part of... The like and the classic like the idea of like you know the autumn wind is a raider like all the NFL films videos I grew up watching like I feel like the Raiders probably for me win this even though again it's not about the mascot it's more about the uniform and who they are but I feel like that's my answer maybe ma ma mascot it's the it's the Viking the Viking the for Viking, you Viking for me yes Uni uniforms I I I go I go Niners one Steelers two. I, I love this dude because it's just, just this classic, tra classic yeah. traditional yeah. hasn't changed over time. Like you know what it what, is. So I think of like, is, does any NFL but, but, team have but, a live mascot? Is, is, is there is there a jaguar floating around? Because <laughs> think about how many live mascots in college. Like there's a tiger, there's yeah, a yeah, there, there's yeah, a steer, yeah. there's plenty of bulldogs, there's dogs, there's, there are war eagle -y birds. The, yep. Well, technically Auburn's mascot's not an eagle. It's though. not the war. Yeah, I know it's not. Yeah, well, Auburn tigers, it, it, but war eagle is in the in the circles. It is kind of interesting. Like they, they're it's it's a they're like an eagle sort of like Ralphie. Yeah, Ralphie. Yeah, Ralphie. Um, I want to do a Ralphie run one time. We interviewed the, the the handler for Ralphie, and she said we could never, can do, never it do it unless you're like, yeah. like they wouldn't let Dion do it. Like he's no, not like no, no. only if you've been a handler, yep. Yep. you can actually do yep. that. It's a major there. Like it's a big. It's obviously very it's a important. Big deal. Yeah. There's no there's no live mascots. Right? I mean, Seattle does Seattle have a hawk? They fly a hawk before a game. No, they got the the twelves and they do, right. Oh, they, they, yeah, bring they, that bell or whatever it is. Or yeah, there's no live no live mascots, huh? The, the lion should have a lion next season. Because I want the lion to have a lion. The lions have a lion. The bears to have a bear. You send a big grizzly bear out there to <laughs> just like just have it roam, just, roam the field just beforehand. Just mean, mean people. Like, yeah, probably, yeah, no live, no live mascots. Panther, just bring a panther. There's should, a, there are a lot of mean. We could have like a. I was gonna say there are plenty of mean ones. It's just they're not actually real. But yeah, that's why the, the Viking just kind of looks. It's a great mascot. Cool. The skull chant's pretty cool. Yes, very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Speaking of the Steelers, Steeler fan RJH, which team has the best stadium in the NFL? Uh, yeah, I, I, want, I want you to start. I want, I want to like, like know like as a like as a player, like like the player viewpoint, like yeah. which best best stadium like to play in from okay. like a surface, like yeah. best stadium like or, or as a 
as a road team, like the stadium you least liked going to? Give me, give me some like a player. Okay, so I've, I've been out now for like seven years. So a lot of the new stadiums I didn't play in, obviously. Um, the newest one I think I played in with the time was I played in, in Dallas. I played in Arizona, which is sort of fairly new at the time. Um, okay, so when I played, the worst was easily Oakland Coliseum. Like, not, not a question. <laughs> um, the Oakland Coliseum Bear, the visiting locker room was the same as the visiting clubhouse for baseball. <laughs> so it's the same size, except we have double the personnel, like triple the personnel, obviously. And the toilets were bad. It backed up. Um, but for the most part, NFL locker rooms, road locker rooms were pretty okay. College is where you get the variance right. of like just right. ridiculous visiting right. locker rooms. Cal's locker room and Memorial Stadium was just atrocious. It was bare. It was the worst locker room I've ever seen in my life. I think it was on purpose, right? They wanted to try to make it Correct. as bad as possible. The best NFL stadiums to me are the ones I, I like the atmosphere the most, right? So, again, these are, I've only played in some of them. Mm -hmm. I think I played in 31 before I retired, so I've been to most of them. So, obviously, some games are more impactful, some were others. I know the Chiefs, and I'm a Chiefs fan, have the record for the loudest stadium in the NFL. I was there when we set the record originally as a Chiefs, mm -hmm. when I was there in 2013. And it's not a great method for determining which field, which is the loudest field. So what they did is they basically put the Guinness World Record guy with a microphone like in the corner of the end zone and said, <laughs> like, cheer now, everyone, okay? <laughs> and we broke the record for noise at the end of the game when we were winning by a lot and the stadium wasn't even full. So I'm kind of like, I, I, the Guinness guy's got to come to the midfield at, at, at midfield on third and 10 and tell me what's the loudest stadium. Mm -hmm. To me, it's Seattle. Seattle, I New like Orleans, Kansas City, a lot of stadiums. New Orleans is very fun to play in because the, the Superdome is kind of funky. Um, the seats are multicolored and like, you know, mm -hmm. try to hide people not being there. Um, and so um, most pro stadiums are pretty bland. I mean, college is where you get right. the the atmospheres. To me, the Rose Bowl will never be beat as far as setting and, and atmosphere. They have great locker rooms there as well. Um, so long-winded answer to say, I mean, the Rose Bowl is my favorite ever. In the NFL... Uh, Seattle, again, Seattle, New Orleans, Kansas City, just like the, the loudness. I, I, I'll tell you what, Philly, we played their two night games with the Giants. That place is raucous, man. Yes. Philly gets loud and crazy. Um, Atlanta's, Dallas, sort of Arizona, big stadiums, but yeah. and it's not really loud for being a no. dome. Ford Field is kind of interesting because it's 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 a dome, but it has a flat roof. It's kind of like SoFi. Has most dooms, yeah, but most so, domes sort of have like a bubble-ish mm -hmm. sort of, Four field is flat. It's kind of an interesting setup, but um, yeah, that's my that's my stadium rundown. Do you have a favorite? You, you on the college football? Do you have a favorite college football stadium? Uh, outside of the Orange Bowl, which is no longer in existence, nothing will ever top the Orange Bowl. LSU Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge is the best. That's my dream. That's one of my it's, list it's of awesome. like. LSU night games on my list of things to attend. And, and I, I know it sounds like an easy answer. And I, I will say this, and I'm not just saying it because you are sitting next to me. Austin is sneaky. If, if you've never, I, I, people, I, I always tell people, if you can get to Austin, <laughs> do it. Because it, it's, it's, it's a very cool, it's fun. cool little stadium and, and, and with, well. the, with the roof over it and like the, the sound. Wow. And, and UW is like that too, Washington. It's a very yeah, it's Washington. and and the setting on on, on like Washington yeah, there with the boats. Washington. No one likes Washington. But NFL, I mean, obviously Lambo is. I'm a traditionalist like that. I think it's more of the, maybe not the. Well, it's so, just like everything about like the the community in Lambo like makes it that for me. So Lambo was fun <clears throat> because when you walked again, it's like a very small tunnel for the visitors. Yes, and then obviously the Packers have sort of expanded their tunnel a little bit. Is you walk out there, and you you feel the history in the stadium because it's the original bowl is still there in the bottom, and you can see where they've added on sort of like mm -hmm. you know piece by piece, and it's just cool because you're like wow this is like there's no stadiums like I mean look the Chiefs have an old stadium that's how Notre Dame Stadium used to be too like but when they put the outer shell yeah. on it they used to have like the original brick yeah so like because look Chiefs have an old stadium Bills have an old stadium I mean that's like it right I mean who else has like an old the Superdome, I guess, sort of is older, but everyone plays in a, like a newer stadium. So we, need, like, we need Shea Stadium back. I spent far too many times. Shea Stadium? Oh, that was I interesting. Never, I, I put it in Jet, Jets moved from Shea in 84, I think they moved to the Meadowlands, Giant Stadium. 84, 85. That yeah, was, Shea bring, was bring the stick interesting. Back. Oh. 
See, I, now, now, you, now you're talking. We, we, need, we, need, we need like a Berman or someone here, or, <laughs> or, or get, get Terry to talk. We need Terry on the next. So I grew talk, up a, talk, talk about three rivers. I grew up a Niners fan, and the Kansas was the only stadium I never went to as an NFL player. I can imagine the weather there could just have been absolutely miserable. I missed a preseason game there with the Vikings. I was hurt. And then we never played in San Francisco. We only, we, I played the, the Niners at home in Carolina. I played them at home with the Giants. I just never went to San Francisco. You got to get, get Howie, too. How, you, you guys can talk about Oakland Coliseum. I'm sure he's got some great oh, stories. Oakland Coliseum. Is, it's, <laughs> it is, I mean, I get why they left. I mean, like, it, I get why... They're going. I mean, it's just, it's just not. It's not. I remember the stuff. I remember the, uh, like it was someone when one of the road baseball announcers were talking about like rats like running in their oh, radio yeah. booth. This it's just and, and you wonder back, why sewer, you wonder why they're up. leaving. Yeah. Old Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Yeah, I never did that. Oh, be- That's why I liked when I went to Buffalo a couple weeks ago at Highmark Stadium mm-hmm. to watch the Chiefs play and Bills play. I liked the vibe of the old. That's why I like the Rose so Bowl I. so much. Like, I like because. I go to games just to watch a game. I don't. I'm not there for the food. I'm not there for the. And like those places, are just set up to watch football. The Arrowhead is just there to watch football. Seattle's nice. I like. I, I, for the longest time, I kept saying Seattle needs to get, get in the mix for like a college football playoff game because that is a really, really it's outside in, in January. Who cares? So what? Well, look. I last time, last time you, you play football outside. I just know this, that. For the foreseeable future, we don't have to worry about Washington hosting a playoff game. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Can't wait to see what the Huskies' win total is next year. I'll go under. I believe I will, too. Under Colorado, under Washington, out west, maybe under USC, under UCLA. Georgia's going to be an interesting one because they have their, their, their three road. They have Ole Miss on the road. They got Texas on the road. And they got someone else on the road that that, that, that is uh, – it, I know we're not. We're talking, we're no, no, it, it, this is great. It, it's going to be like all of them are going to be different this year because, like, you know, like Oregon has Michigan, Ohio State, and Washington. Like, it's a different vibe now for these win totals. Like, the, the, you you play tougher schedules for yeah. for the SEC and Big Ten opponents. Like, what, 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 they had one other road games. I forget what 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 the heck it was. They're at Bama, right? No, yeah. Bama's at home. They're at home for Bama. Full schedule. Here we go. Full full. Full football schedule, 2024. Here we go. Yeah, Clemson early. There's another yeah, at, at Bama. It is at Bama. So they're at Bama. They're at Ole Miss, and and, and they're at Texas. Like I'm curious what what they like. Do, you, do they put maybe they do, ten and a half? Oh, I was gonna say if they plus ten and a half. I'll probably still go over. I'll, I'll, I'll probably post eleven. Probably post eleven. When do these come, come out? On. April. I'm sure some. some I mean, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure one of the offshore books will. NFL uh, win totals come out in April too. So I'm maybe. sure they'll post one of the off, one of these offshore books for do a little PR kind of kind of release. So and I think we've talked enough college for now. We have one more question. We, we this one, one seems unimportant, but you're yeah, welcome. I was, I was gonna, do we have time for one more question or not? You're welcome to hit it. Someone, someone by the name of Chelsea Walker has has chimed in. I don't know this individual at all. What are the odds Jason Kelsey will be playing week one with the Eagles in Brazil? What are the odds that this particular person will be involved in Bear Bits podcast week one when the Eagles are playing oh, in Brazil? Just drive it. Just sh- you, yes, just, yeah. We, 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 lo- we, 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 we love our producer, Chelsea um, Walker. So here's the thing about Kelsey. About Kelsey it's interesting. So Just winding her up. Um, a lot of players say at the end of the season, I'm going to retire. And then they spend a month drinking at football games and having the best time of, of your life. <laughs> and then you realize, like, March and April, when your body starts feeling better and OTAs are coming up soon, Bear, and it get, the weather gets a little bit warmer and the joints feel better and you're wearing your family for a while, you're like, I got to go back to work. <laughs> and so I think Kelsey probably thinks he's going to retire. Obviously, the way he talked after the game, they lost the game. Sounded like Sounded he was going to retire. I think right now, if I were to wager on it, I'd say, yes, he will retire. Um, <laughs> but I don't think it's a foregone conclusion he's going to retire. Now, part of players like him and his situation is, I'm sure the Eagles want to know before free agency, before the draft, are you retiring, are you not retiring? Because they need to figure out what they're going to do, right? If, right. if he's not going to re- play, then you you got to put Jurgens in and you draft a right guard, right? Do you, like, what do you, what do, you do? He's got to know. So... I'd imagine it comes sooner or later, but I think that a lot of players, again, say, I'm retiring. They have a month where they just 
their body. They go they hang out. They they enjoy life. And then when you get back into routine, you realize I can still play football. Mm -hmm. But he he looked like he was done at the end of the season. Like his mannerisms, the way he played, his emotions after the game. I think if I would have waged on that, I think he's done playing football. Will Travis Kelsey retire at the end of the year? I do not think so, no. Okay. Why? Why would retire? I don't, I'm just I'm no, saying. I, I, don't think, a, I don't think he retires. Maybe we have a, a league with no Kelsey. I, I, look, they're going to they're gonna get any job they want in the offseason, except except Bear Bats podcast. Well, um, the, so, the, the, those, those two spots are unavailable. Yeah. Um, look, if they retire now, I mean, again, they would have any media job they wanted. They Correct. know that. Um, but you, you're always going to have that. It's not going to change. If they play, if both play one more year, it, it, the media like job's still going to be there next season. So, and probably I'm, more media jobs will be there as the NFL gets yeah. more media partners involved I, in the league. I think Travis will stay longer because of Mahomes and just if they can find a couple wide receivers in the offseason, there won't much be as much burden on him this, uh, this next season. Again, the same thing happens. Like this time of year, I would imagine he's a little bit beat up, right? It's a long season. He's 34, I believe. He's played a lot of football. He gets to the Super Bowl, win or lose. He probably wasn't hurt. I mean, probably wasn't healthy really all year because he started the year. Started hurt. And he, you know, he hurt his ankle at some point this season. And Mahomes mentioned the rest really helped him, and he'll rest obviously this week, the week 18 rest. I didn't imagine, look, he goes and follows Taylor for a month, and, and then he comes back and realizes, like, I'm ready to play I'm football good. again. So I think Travis plays. I think Jason probably doesn't. Um, I was looking at the, the Pro Bowl, by the way, where D Jason was at. If he had lost a bunch of weight already, that's a good sign, you know. Like if you lost, and I don't think he had. So, I, I don't think he plays. Is my is my guess. Where I'm, ho I'm hoping like the, like your theory about like saying you're retiring, saying you're taking time. I'm hoping that convinces Jurgen Klopp, Liverpool manager, to uh, say, you know what? They, uh, sorry, not, I'm just kidding. Not taking a year off. I'm, I'm staying. At, who's happening? What, who's doing what uh, now? The Liverpool Football Club, their manager Jurgen Klopp. What is, what is that? Uh, English Premier League. Oh, okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I I'm just, I watched Ted Lasso. Come on, I know, I know. Yeah, that. But speaking of coaches, where are you? And it's it's just a, Andy Reid. What do you think? Is, okay, you think only, there's any? You think there's any smoke to only this? Only one person was reporting this, and that's it. One person. Okay. Who's a conspiracy theorist who covers the <laughs> NFL? It's one person who's doing this. I'm just saying. I don't know. Andy Reid. He's what? He's 62, 63. He's a football coach. Right. And he's got. Right. Patrick Mahomes. This is the thing about it. So a lot, a lot of these guys, like their entire life, they coach football. It's all they know how to do. It's why when you see coaches retire, they go back a year later. It's like all they know how to do, yep. right? And Andy Reid right now has it set. He's making, obviously, the money to him is not important. But he's in Kansas City. He That's his building. It's his place. He's going to the game every single season. The best quarterback in the NFL. Why would he stop? Like, why would he stop? He's he's He has his grandkids nearby, obviously. His family's like I, I don't. There's no. I don't think there's any bone in his body that what well, he's. Gonna I stop. agree with you. I just thought I'd throw it out there because there was that individual out there who brought that up. Who's a, who's a conspiracy a conspiracy <laughs> theorist about the NFL? He did, that person doesn't actually like the NFL. I think there's no way you like the NFL to talk about the NFL like that. True. I, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. But right there, it's nothing on the back side of the paper. Any any any, any other ridiculous. Ridiculousness that you like you'd like to get out there. I want to know what player was attacked by the coyote. Now we're recording this to be fair on Tuesday. Yes. So by Friday when this we, comes we out, we might know. We might know who attacked the uh, who attacked the what the player. random player. Yeah. Is it a, is it a current player or former? So player? it was. Like, it's at the. It's in the Lake Las Vegas, which I didn't know existed, where the players are saying that it's a man-made lake off basically the mm -hmm. river that runs to Lake Mead. I mean, it's just a man-made, and so that's where the players are staying for both teams. So, is it a current player? I imagine current players have been told don't mess with the coyotes. Right. I, I, I would hope so. But like, if you see a coyote walking, do you like? Is the player like, "Hey, coyote!" and like walks up to <laughs> like it's a dog? Like, I, I don't think the coyote is like running after a, a, a human like I that. I wouldn't so think so. I need to know the backstory about this. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that was fun. It was good. Thank you, the listeners. Ch chime in, chime in through the off season as well. We're, we're, we're not, we're not going anywhere. We're, we're here. We got we got baseball. We got baseball. March we Madness. got March Madness coming up. We got golf majors. We got tennis majors. We got triple crown. We're not going to put my, my annual wager on, on Tiger Woods with the Masters. Just every don't year, do no it. What. Don't do. It. I'll I'll book that for you and add a couple of zeros. <laughs> for Jeff, I'm Bear. Less you bet, more you lose when you win. <laughs>